What's up? Freak Steve Eckert here, and this is a video series, new video series I'm going to do on bicep, or actually this one, bicep rupture repair without surgery video series. The first video on this video number one, it's about two and a half weeks out since this has been screwed up, since it's been completely ruptured. I'll go through the whole process of what happened, what I'm doing with it, how we're going to deal with this. This is for you if you've had a, a distal bicep tear or if you've just had any kind of injury and you need to know how to get through it with the right mindset, the right training, the right approach, the right perspective, this video series is going to be 100% for you, even if it's not a bicep, if it's something else, just fill in the blanks for whatever it is for you. And this is video number one. Again, so about two and a half weeks ago at my son's birthday party, I did a whole video episode, a whole podcast episode about this. I'm not going to go too much into detail. I'll tag that video down below in the notes. But I was doing a rope climb, a plyometric rope climb, where I grab it, I jump up, grab it, jump up, grab it. Very explosive. I've done it tons of times. It's part of an obstacle course that we do, like a military-type obstacle course that we do it at different programs that we run. I finished going through the obstacle course and decided just to shoot one last video of just doing this explosive ro double-arm rope climb. So you have basically one rope in each hand jumping up. And literally the first or second jump, the hand slipped or caught on, fully extended this arm, a ripping, popping sound immediately came down off the rope, landed on my feet. And, and my son was recording it. He's like, do you want me to post this to the stories? He was doing just a Instagram story. I'm like, no, don't worry about it. Don't post it on the story. And I just walked away. And I already knew right off the bat, I knew it was completely torn, completely ruptured, even though I'm no damn doctor or surgeon, but I just knew it because I know my body, I know the feeling, and that damn sound will make you sick to your stomach if you've ever heard that sound. So that happened. I, I'm not going to go into the whole details of a story about it, about the uh, car ride home that we had and the way I just had, it was the beginning of a birthday party, so I just had to deal with this arm now completely jacked, can't really use it or move it, and dealt with it. Go watch the podcast episode to see the details about that because this is more about the recovery. So the next day, I know it's torn. I know I need to do something about it. I start doing all the research like you're probably doing. It's probably how you found this video. And I still worked out the next day. I train every day, no matter what. So I still worked out the next day. I couldn't even really hold this arm up because this bicep is completely flopping. This is all swollen, like yellow bruising. It's still, you can't see because of the hair and tattoo and, and, and tan here. But it's like all this yellow bruising in here, this weird stuff going on. Just pure mush where this tendon should be. It's like a, a strong like wire tree branch there and here was just mush and now it's already having some scar tissue building back up. So I took a, a, a not a fanny pouch. I don't buy fanny pouches, but I have a hip waist, a gun waist pouch holder for, for a, a weapon. And I used that. I turned it inside out. I strapped it around my shoulder and I held that as a sling while I was working out. Still did a full workout. Still haven't missed a day of training. But it just was completely destroyed. I knew I had to do something about it. So I went and made a doctor's appointment. Of course, all they did, didn't even really look at it. They just make you an appointment for an MRI. After the MRI, then you're going to have a follow-up with a surgeon, all that other stuff. So I'm going through the veterans, uh, medical veterans hospital. So they, it takes forever for everything. Literally, the first thing they told me was, it's best to get the surgery done in the first couple of weeks. But we could schedule you for an MRI about six to eight weeks from now. I'm like, hell no, that's not going to work. So Knew I had to, to, to figure this out quicker so I could make a decision on, depending on the, the state of it, where it's at. So I scheduled a, I went through the procedure, uh, made them rush the process of getting the MRI. So they finally scheduled an MRI, but it was still a couple weeks out. In that time, I still trained every day, just worked around it, just didn't use this arm at all for the first probably week of training. Not even any bands, no movements, couldn't really even do any movements, like pretty much nothing. Had to use just left arm on everything I was doing, shaving, everything, just using the left arm. We even had an Operation Black Site, which is a three-day event where I run the morning workouts each day, and I assist in the, the fighting and the self-defense portion. And I just had to suck it up and just do it with this arm just dangling around and use it as much as I can and move it around. That was only a one week from it happening. It happened on a Saturday. The next Saturday we had, or Friday, no, actually Thursday, we had Operation Black Site. So it was less than a week from when it happened that I had this, this event. After the event, I said, all right, now I'm going to go. The, someone told me I should go to the emergency room so I'll get faster MRIs. And they did do a rush MRI on it. So about a week later, I got the MRI done. So whatever. And then 17 days after it happened, finally met with the surgeon to review the MRI. And so as we're, I'm walking back with the, 
the surgeon to go look at the MRI and talk about the results of it. He's like, uh, what, what did you do to this arm? Like, cause it was just destroyed. He said the MRI is a complete full rupture, complete detachment of this, this tendon here, the distal bicep uh, tendon down there. And he's like, what did you do? So I explained to him the rope climbing thing. And he, we go back there. He starts doing his, his tests and they do all these different, uh, kind of like arm wrestling tests to see if you pronation pronation and supination and flexion and extension so he's doing all this stuff resisting against him and i've already been using the arm now this was two weeks later so i already started doing some some rotator cuff stuff some band stuff some forearm stuff some range of motion shoulder stuff some very light half half motion on a resistance band with light bands for like half a chest press half a row when i'm doing a chest press machine i'm doing single arm but I'm keeping this hand here just as it comes back, just to brace it. So I'm at least getting like isometric tension every rep on the machine. So I'm pushing forward with the left arm and holding here. So I'm keeping it alive because I don't want the shoulder to stiffen up. Just from holding it bent like this, it screwed up my elbow here. I don't know, there's like a tennis elbow here. There's bone sticking out here, but I'll deal with that. So he's doing all his tests and he does supination then, or pronation then supination test. So he holds his hand here. He says, or he holds his hand here and he's pushing against, this is the, the fucked up arm. He's like, don't let me push it down. He's pushing it, and I'm struggling. I'm fighting it and not letting it go. And, of course, I feel tension in there, and he's digging in. We're having basically an arm wrestling match, which he lost the arm wrestling match, but it's only – and, he, and he, he did that, and he's, like, fighting to push it down, and it didn't really go down the way it should. And he looks back at the MRI, and he looks back. He's like, do you, do you train a lot? And she's like, obviously, you train, so your forearm muscles – other muscles in your upper arm, tricep, uh, brachialis or something that's up there in the upper arm that's attached to the upper arm, built in with the forearm and the shoulder, all that stuff, just grip strength and all those other things that we train all the time are help, we're helping out because he also did range of motion tests and I had range of motion that I shouldn't have had. I had strength I shouldn't have had, supination and pronation, both movement and resistance that I shouldn't have had, flexion strength. Not really there too much yet, but that's going to come once it scars up a little bit. So it was way more, he said, it's not typical. He said, normally when he does that test, it just flops down because there's no ligament there holding it in place for the supination of the, the hand and the wrist. So he's like, you know what? You have a choice here. You can either get the surgery or not get the surgery. And he really didn't have any recommendation. I think this is one of the benefits of going to the VA. Yeah, they made me wait, but it's not like it's a surgical clinic where they only get paid if they do surgery. Like, I don't think this is affecting this guy's paycheck, whether he does this surgery or not. So he's giving me the options to let me know what it's going to be like with surgery, what it's going to be like without surgery. He told me with, with surgery, I'm going to be in the thing for this amount of weeks. And I, after six weeks, I could do a five pound dumbbell, all this stuff. And by three weeks, I'll be up to a 10 pound dumbbell and can start light weightlifting after our three months. And, but to do things like rope climbs and pull-ups and monkey bars is going to be several months past the three months. The three months is like just the general recovery but it's going to be screwed up in a kitten and you know in the cast and sling for weeks here and then they slightly extend it out week by week this whole really restrictive changing your quality of life process or i could not get surgery and he said with the way that my other muscles are working and the way that i have range of motion and everything i use this arm totally normal without this just a, a week and a half or two weeks later he said it's not going to affect my lifestyle at all my strength will come back. He said, I'll be doing pull-ups in a, in a couple of weeks if I want. I mean, technically, I could do pull-ups right now if I want to. I would just use the other muscles. I could do it. It wouldn't feel great in there. But I could do bang out a set of 10 pull-ups if I needed to right now. I could do the fucking rope climb right now. I could do that plyometric rope thing right now if I had to. Wouldn't want to. Wouldn't be great for it. Probably would set back the recovery. But I could do it. So he said, since my strength is there, the range of motion is there, the only re reason for surgery would be he used a, a fancier word than aesthetics. I don't even, I couldn't even, I didn't even know what the word was. I had to ask him, what does that even mean? And he said, just the way it looks aesthetically, like you're going to go through all these months of rehab and restriction and lower quality of life for all these months, just so it looks better. Because you could see here, this muscle attaches all the way down to the forearm right here with this tendon. This has like a two and a half inch gap right here. So once this, I could start working this muscle. So I haven't worked this bicep. I've worked other muscles. I haven't worked this in two and a half weeks now, almost three weeks. So it's not tight. But it once, once I'm able to work this again, it's going to be just as tight as this one. It'll just be higher up and like a, a weird shaped ball. And that's it. 
Strength will come back pretty much full strength. Maybe slightly flexing strength, like on a heavy bicep curl, it might fatigue, and I wouldn't get that last one or two reps that I normally would, would eke out at the end of a set, but who cares? I don't do heavy bicep curls regularly anyway. Once in a while, I'll do some light stuff at the end of a workout. Uh, maybe I'll, I won't be able to get that extra pull-up where the bicep kicks in a little bit, but pull-ups are so much more back and grip and forearm and, and lats. So he said, I, I maybe will lose a little strength if I don't get surgery, but the, the main reason for where I'm at, I'm at right now would be for the way it looks, and that's it. And maybe I'll lose some supination overall endurance. Like if I'm having to crank on a, a change in a tire or something or over and over the grip, but doing this right now, I feel just as strong. I don't feel my bicep engaging at all, but I feel just as strong doing this. I can see if I had to pull something this way right now, that would not be as strong. But once this knots back up and balls back up and I'm able to work it, maybe some supination strength not, to me is not worth it for the surgery. But here's, so here's the game plan that we came up with. I scheduled the surgery. Today's the July 25th. I scheduled the surgery for August 16th. So it's going to be like way out there. He told me I'm going to have to do a something graph where they're going to have to take tendons from a, a cadaver because just the way my muscles are and the way they are that, especially that amount of time later, they're going to have to add that in if I do the surgery. So he scheduled me for the surgery. They did all the pre-op stuff in case I want to do surgery, but I could literally cancel it the day before. So I have that just as a backup plan. Like if in the next week or two, it just goes downhill, it just turns into my arm, just into mush and it, something happens and I can't use it. I have that as a backup plan. But as of now, the game plan is no surgery and just have a deformed bicep. I don't really give a shit if it doesn't look a certain way. I don't care. I'm not a freaking bodybuilder. I'm not some sports model or some shit. I really don't care as long as I have the function and the strength. But also I can't imagine. I also have to do some shooting qualification stuff coming up pretty soon that has to do with my, my CCW, concealed carry license. And just in general, having that no lack, and this is my strong arm, to not be able to have this arm at full functionality for, for months, just so it could look better and maybe regain full strength again, is not worth it to me. Even just a safety standpoint, like I need to be able to unholster my weapon fast and not have to just rely on my left hand. And just as a backup plan, I did go to the range, I've been training, so when shit like this happens, like always use it as a, a weaponized bad shit that happens to you. It, it made me go and do things more with left hand. So I went single hand shooting with pistols, all my different types of pistols with left hand up to 15 yards just to see how it goes. And a little weird at first, arm gets a little tired. Plus his arm, it was right after the gym. This arm is doing almost all the work in the gym too. So now shooting all these different guns at 15 yards, 10 yards, five yards. So single arm and off hand arm. I need to train that anyway. What happens if you break your hand or injure your arm and you need to shoot with the other hand? So it made me start training it and realize I need to train that way more often. So at least once a month now, I go shooting every week. At least once a month, I'll go shooting double hand or, or just single hand, both hands, and also single hand, off hand, left hand a little more often just to get it used to it. So to me, the downtime wasn't worth it. The lack of functionality in everyday life is not worth it. Like right now, I could do anything. I could tie my shoe. I could... Do whatever I have to do. I could put my seatbelt on. I could, I could do push-ups right now if I want to. I still haven't done any weight-bearing exercise on it. It's been just bands so far. But the downtime is not worth it. I'm fully functional right now. I could do everything with this arm, maybe not at full strength, even working, like typing. I'm typing all day. Then I'm going and running workshops and having to move stuff around and demonstrate exercises and shooting. And like I have a Squire event, a father-son program coming up. I'm going to uh, do a three-week three week RV trip with the family, going around doing some podcasts and going on some TV shows and stuff like that. That restriction is not worth it to me just so that it could look good, maybe look better in several months from now, and maybe have a little more supination strength. I'm fully confident surgery or nurse surgery, that would be 100% fine, and I will come back better and stronger no matter what. That's what you need to think about it. Whatever kind of injury you have or whatever's going on, it doesn't matter. That's one bicep. That's not even, that's like not even 5% of my body. And out of exercises that I do, that's less than 5%. It's like fucking 2%. So I'm not going to let that. I still have 95 plus percent of my body that I could work out with and train. This thing's going to make me into a cardio machine. It's going to make me think about work using my core more, more balance, make me use my left arm more for functional stuff like shooting and, and other regular stuff that I'm doing, like I, I, I was shaving with, but already I could already shave with this right arm. This is what this bicep about. I haven't done any punching yet, but I'll be doing so. I'll do, do some punching probably 
two weeks from now, I'll, I'll try some punching and maybe try some body weight stuff, TRX rows and stuff like that to start off. So no matter what, whether I have to get the surgery, if I decide it just goes downhill in the next two weeks or don't get the surgery, I know I'm going to be not only fine, I'm going to continue getting even freaking better every single day, no matter what. And this goes for just a bicep or whatever injury I'm going to get. I'm sure something else will happen in the future. I train every single day. I'll do all kinds of tra crazy fitness challenges and hikes and stupid exercises like these plyo fucking rope climbs, which I probably will never do again. I say probably because I might just get the itch to do it just to prove that I, and Tyson's behind the camera shaking his head, just to show myself that I have come back and I can focus and not have to be afraid of anything because I know I'll come back so strong that I'll be able to do it. Hey, look, at least I don't have to worry about tearing my distal bicep tendon. Can't tear it. It's going to be just molded into place. Like I already feel scar tissue. Only we're like 17 or, or no, now like 20 days from the injury. I already feel this like scarring up inside. It's just like molding. It's like forming like freaking Wolverine. And this is with just my normal vitamins and supplements that I take. You know, people told me about peptides. I'm going to look into that and, and see if I want to decide I want to add in some peptides or whatever. But so far, it's literally creatine and glutamine and just my normal protein shakes and all my regular vitamins that I always took all the time anyway, and collagen. Funny thing is I take collagen every single day, so I've just upped my collagen a little bit. But you do stupid shit all the time and train every day. Eventually, some shit's going to happen. I'm 46 years old, and I've never... This, this Getting an MRI on this was the first MRI of my life, surprisingly. All the stupid shit I've done, literally decades of training with no days off in years, and I've had one MRI in my life, and only, other than dental x-rays, I think only two x-rays had it on my neck and, and chest. I think that was only, and one time on my foot in the Marine Corps and I broke my foot. And then this was the third, they x-rayed this before the MRI of So I've only had three x-rays in my life and one MRI. It's the first MRI at 46 years old. So obviously it's possible to go and train hard every day to stay in shape, to stay under 10% body fat for decades and not even get injured. I've had other injuries and tweaks. I've dropped weights on my feet and broken toes and jammed up shoulders and my neck in jujitsu, but nothing that I needed x-rays for or surgery for or nothing I couldn't recover from and deal with on my own. So with my history of this streak and uh, the, the I think the human body is a, a fucking remarkable machine. I have so much faith and confidence in myself to be able to bounce back from this thing even stronger and not miss any time in the gym and still train my ass off without surgery. And then let, let, uh, and I'm going to do this a video. I'm going to keep you updated each week how this is going on this progress. And then we'll see in two weeks from now, about a little more than two weeks, if how it's going, if the final cutoff time for that surgery is the 16th. Like after that, it's like just too late for surgery for this because it's going to be already molded in scar tissue all solidified in there. So I'll let you know how it goes. But as of now, there's not going to be any surgery. And I know it's just going to be, I'll be just the same freaking hardworking, training every day, busting my ass freak that I've been this entire time. I'll just have some weird deformed bicep. And guess what? I don't care. Look at me already. Can't get much worse than this. So I'm not worried about it. So this is the mindset you need to have. This is a perspective you need to have. No matter what you're going through, no matter what's going on, but what injury you have, whether you have to have the surgery, whether you decide not to go surgery, whatever your ops are, if you must have surgery, if you're forced to, or if you can't have surgery, whatever the case, there is always a way to work around it. There's always an upside. There's always a plus side. Look, just this alone, has uh, I've used this to, I've, I've done a podcast episode on this. I'm now starting this video series on it. It's been, I've used this as a, a speaking point in, in front of a, a crowd when they were asking questions about resilience and, and being a role model and leadership and, and the, the whole story I tell in, in the podcast episode. It's been a coaching moment for my kids, a coaching moment for my coaching clients, and a coaching moment for myself to show myself what I actually am made of, what I'm made of, how can I really handle resilience and adversity and setbacks and, and major injuries. Like This is a major injury. This thing freaking snapped just like ripped, complete separation in half. So it's showing myself what I'm made of, what my potential is, what I am truly freaking capable of, and also showing myself not only do I have what it takes, do I still have what it takes, and I, I am sure 100% certain that I do, and I know that this is just the beginning. I'm going to be coming back so much stronger than this. I still haven't missed a day, not planning on missing a day. I even told the surgeon, if I do do surgery, I will still be training the next day. I don't know if it'll just be uphill I'll walk uphill on the treadmill for 60 minutes, but I will get some, some training in the next day. So you're going to have to give me some protocol to deal with that because it's going to happen 
no matter what you tell me, I will train the next day, no matter what. So I hope this helps you deal with this. This is just a, a, a little longer of a, a video on this. I'll do this weekly. It'll be much shorter, but I had to give you the two weeks history and build up to this. But I will keep you updated week by week so you can see what the possibilities are and the progress are and show you how fucking amazing the human body is. And this is without any performance enhancement other than creatine and glutamine. There's no steroids or testosterone or TRT or any of that stuff that I'm using to help recover this. Maybe peptides if I, if I decide that's what I want to use because I've never tried that before. But right now it's creatine and glutamine. That has served me for the last 25 years and it's going to get me through this and it's already getting me strong as hell. Like I could already ball this fist up and throw a freaking punch and just, it just, it bicep just jiggles like it's a water balloon there. But I don't give a shit. So put some comments down below. What are you dealing with? What kind of injuries you're dealing with? How are you dealing with it? And shit, reach out. Start, start a discussion down below if you need some help dealing with staying positive and having the right perspective as you attack. And that's what you need to do is attack these injuries, these adversities. Turn your adversity into advantage. Turn your suffering into a superpower. It's a physical breakdown so you can have breakthroughs mentally, emotionally, socially, spiritually, and make you get even better every day. So let me know in the comments down below what you're dealing with. Let's talk about it. I will see you next week as I keep you updated on the progress of this jiggly ass bicep I have. And in case no one told you yet today, you are freaking awesome. No excuses.